or elementary schools here in the States, high schools, and then uh, tertiary institutions like my university. So that's how I found Tim actually through the main education programs. Um, and that's what gets me so stoked about it. I, when I first started, I, and when I was living back in Australia, I was doing those education programs. So mm -hmm. I'd go around with Tim to the schools and get to teach the kids. And it's really fun program, um, and which has obviously evolved over time, but we would generally like Tim um, would speak in front of the whole school mm -hmm. and give them a presentation on his story and take three and what plastic pollution is and why it's a problem um, and why we need to do something about it. And then typically we would work with like a small group within that school. So maybe like a year group. Um, so like we take the fourth graders off and do a bit more of an in-depth workshop. And it was really awesome because it's creative. Like we would give them the opportunity to come up with their own solutions to the problem. Mm -hmm. um, whether it was like introducing a recycling or trash collection program at the school, or they might create artworks to raise awareness on it. And um, it's, it's really interesting because we're just conditioned to um, accept plastic, but the kids, when they, you know, realize that this is a problem, they really like take to it and realize that they have to do something about it. Um, and then often you hear stories, I'll go back home and, convince their parents oh, we can't use plastic pollution anymore so it was really cool just to see the power of youth that aren't conditioned by society yet to really Absolutely. get behind these problems and you know who knows if we'll have a beautiful ocean to play in <laughs> coming generations i hope we do but the next generation will kind of already be doing what you know our generation is starting to do so well it's it's a real it's a real problem and you know not just regular plastics but the microplastics that we are finding in in our foods and all that like i feel like you know you have the the patches that are the gyres that are floating in the ocean yeah. like it it feels like there's going to have to be like a a huge um huge effort by people you know um not just um how we consume, but also like what we're consuming and, and there will be have to have to be some invention too, you know? Um, so there's, so my company, I work for a gift company okay. and we sell plastic stuff. So it's, oh, no. <laughs> it's totally hurts, but we wow. use this thing called BDP. It's called, it stands for breakdown plastic. It's an additive apparently. And I've read studies and I've, tried to read as much as I could on it. And basically it, it's like um, putting MSG that, you know, into plastic. So enzymes devour it within four to six years, apparently either in the sea or a landfill. So I'm, I feel like there's going to have to be some, like there's going to have to be some invention out of it because we rely so much on this, on that material because it's so affordable. Mm -hmm. And I'm always like, trying to wonder, think of like, well, what are we going to do? How do we, how do we invent out of this? Because it's, it's hard not to fully pull away from it. Yeah. You know, everything from our devices that we have to like headphones and all the different things. Like it's hard to, we have to find some other resource, I guess. Yeah. My brain's tingling. I've got a few things that you mentioned headphones. Tingle, like, let them out. I know yeah. it's like, this is what it's about. You got to educate me here. I'm, you know, in a lot of ways. So, so here, come on. Tingle. Let you mentioned headphones, right? I think yeah. it's really important that we, that we, uh, like sh I share with everyone, when we talk about plastic pollution and the crisis, we're really mm -hmm. referring to single use plastics, right? Right. Plastic's an incredible um, compound that humans have created and it's mm -hmm. so powerful. I mean, I'm talking to you on Zoom and my computer is made of plastics and metals. Yeah. Your headphones are like the cars that we drive. There's plastics are really useful. Um, chemical compound that we've created single use plastics, the problem. So things yeah. that we're really only using once and then um, it's entering landfill or it's entering the ocean. Um, and when I mean, when I say single use, you know, I come across a plastic bag here or two there, like sometimes it's unavoidable, especially during lockdown, it's become more yeah. difficult and I might reuse that bag, but that it's still single use. And like, I really appreciate that people do reuse single use items but at the end of the day it's going to end up in landfill or the ocean so when we talk about plastics here on this podcast we're meaning like single use right um and then you also mentioned it's cheap and that's yeah. part of the problem because right. it's 
it's from petroleum. So virgin plastic comes from, you know, like we create polyester out of, out of oil and oil is a finite resource that we, you know, are, don't have a lot of, um, I think people will be like, Oh, we'll never run out. But I mean, to, to extract <laughs> further oils kind of, you know, dangerous. Um, well, so now we it, have to do, you know, we have to do, you know, all the, you know, liquid natural gas and, you know, you keep having to look for different ways of, you know, of extracting it, which are more invasive to the environment. It, it yeah. definitely, you go to greater lengths to get it, which is not always the best thing for, <laughs> no. for the world. So yeah, it absolutely. might be, it might be okay for now, but not for future generations, right? Mm-hmm. It's not good um, for any. <laughs> really. So it, it, it being cheap is part of the problem because if we just increase the price of it, people might stop using it as quickly. And it's yeah. very interesting. Like, you know, we used to use glass for a lot of the uses that we use plastic for like bottles and stuff. And glass is more expensive, I believe than plastic, but petroleum is a finite resource that we <laughs> don't have a lot of. And, you know, we could use it for other uses, but yeah, you, like you said, glass is sand, like it's unlimited and well, it, to re, you can reuse it and it never loses its structure. Like you can recycle glass, but you can't recycle plastic. Well, glass will, will break down into a beach eventually again, you yeah. know, like it will break down into sand and, and, you know, over time very easily, you know, and as opposed to, and no animals are really going to choke on glass. Well, yeah. you know, very rarely hear of that, but plastic is you know it takes forever to to break down and like with sand you know hopefully it creates a good sand bank or i mean oh, yeah. you call it sandbars in america <laughs> don't you what, what i you do think? a little bit of both you know I, I, it depends you know <laughs> but you'll never see a, a sandbar a pumping beach break made out of plastic but yeah it's so it's it's kind of baffling and you know uh, we could talk for hours and hours about the political side of it but it really is quite political both in Australia and America and other countries, we're just, it comes down to, for me, we're addicted to fossil fuels. Um, And it's so entrenched in the way that we do things. And, you know, you and I both know the situation in America around like fossil fuels. It's the same in Australia. The government's so addicted to it and it's really hard to pull away from it. It Really, truly is an addiction. And this, it's, it's, it's a difficult problem to tackle. Um, Yeah. It's, you know, it's, um, it's there's a lot of you know I, I think it's easy to make certain people and, and companies and everything boogeymen you know about it too and dehumanize um yeah. but it we have to remember like i think a lot of people try to just i don't know they're they think they're doing a good job right like you you become a cog in in an organization you're focused on doing the things you're supposed to do you know achieve this do this and you feel good about yourself, but you're not really, you're just part of the machine. And, you know, and there's a whole bunch of those types of people and they don't think they're necessarily doing wrong, but as a collective whole, it's doing wrong. It's a whole machine that we have to break apart in some ways. Yeah. I I, I like what you said, the boogeyman thing. I think when I first started out on this, I really had that mentality and um, working with, with and for Tim, he's such an intelligent person. He's got this big picture vision of the world. And, um, you know, if you look at all these environmental groups, whether it's plastic pollution or, you know, any kind of environmental issue that uh, people have been standing up for, mm-hmm. there hasn't been a whole lot of success um, in fighting the powers that be that are polluting and destroying the environment, whether they're intentionally doing it or unintentionally. Yeah. Doing it. And so, for the past like maybe five years, I've really been looking at like actually like um, you know collaborating with, discussing with these people that are maybe leading these companies that are polluting, and creating solutions with them. Because what has shifted in the last like say five years maybe mm-hmm. is these corporations, for one reason or another, do want to change. Like no one really, um, no, most people don't want plastic pollution to continue um the companies producing the plastic do but for example like coca-cola um unilever these massive companies that are the larger polluters yeah are at the stage now where they understand that um you know consumers will stop buying their products if they don't make commitments and they have made pretty ambitious commitments to start using recycled plastic or 
whatever um, solution it might be, they're investing millions, if not billions of dollars into trying to change these things. So I, uh, that's why I'm leaning towards um, corporate sustainability, because I really do believe that working with, not against um, these corporations or groups or leaders is the answer. I mean, you know, how did, how did you come to that conclusion? Like what, what, what was the epiphany for you on that? Like, was it slowly over time or was it like a moment of meeting someone? Uh, I think a combination of a few different things. I think it was reading books. I'm trying to recall. Um, I think it was a book uh, by Bob Brown, who was um, a political leader or still is a political leader in Australia. He was yeah. the leader of the Greens Party in Australia, which um, I think a lot of credit can go to them to the reasons why Australia is, you know, does have a lot of beauty, natural beauty. But he was talking about, um, and someone who's got experience working with corporations, right? And also yeah. doing um, like Greenpeace and other stuff like that. Just being like, let's take a look at the past 10 years. Like we haven't seen the progress that we would expect to see by just being activists and fighting these corporations. Yeah. So let's try something different. Um, let's try like meeting these people, finding out, you know, what their intentions are like and, and creating solutions together. So it was, it was reading. It was also, you know, just being mentored and listening to Tim um, who also like has shifted yeah. towards um, like conscious capitalism for lack of a better mm -hmm. word. And that's actually what he's focused on at the moment. He's got a new organization called ocean impact org um, that is, um, tapping into that whole world. So it's something over time. And um, you mentioned before you work, your job works with plastic, yeah. same. It's, yeah. it's, uh, I think when I was younger working for Lululemon, I had so many moments where I'm like, oh, what am I doing? Like I'm trying to fight plastic pollution, but I'm working for a company that makes their clothing out of plastic. And I was talking to Tim, um, you know, he'd give me the advice, like you can change things from the inside, you know? I was yeah. like, oh, I should just go work for Patagonia. Everyone's all already on that vibe. But, <laughs> you know, within that group, I might not create a lot of change. But if I can um, work for a company that has a lot of room for growth and, and a bigger company that has a huge reach, then the impact could be bigger. So um, I just think, I think we need to be working all together to create these solutions. Just like similar to system, systemic racism, like... Yeah. I hang out with people that have similar values to me, but if we just amongst ourselves continue talking, like we're not really going to change the minds of the people that are like, you know, creating the problems, like the overtly racist people. Like you need to not just distance yourself from the people that have different values to you. I think you need to sit with them and, and talk to them and see them as humans and find out what makes them tick and what their intentions are and, and see, then I, move yeah. forward from there. I totally agree with that. Like I, you know, I always hear people saying, oh, I unfriended this person or that person. And, you know, I, th I think I've really unfriended. I've just like, sometimes well, I'm not on Facebook really anymore, but like I, when I didn't really want to see what people are posting, but I still maybe, you know, people are com complex. And so there's a lot of good that some people do. And there's just certain things you really really vehemently disagree with but i mean you shouldn't let that stop you from engaging with them you know because when you stop the engagement it pushes them off more into more radical territory you know yeah. and if we can communicate more to each other and realize we're humans you'll have less of that dehumanization hopefully um you know and i always I always feel like I've, I've always wanted to be friendly with the people who I know I'm not supposed to get along with or who's going to have like opposing views. And I always try to become more friends with them because I feel like that's a way to, to sway influence and to be a, a good role model to them too, you know, and they can make fun of you and you just take it in, in stride and said, and just say, well, that's your opinion and I'm going to do mine. And a lot of times that can change people's minds too, without forcing it on them. Absolutely. I mean, also speaking of whether it's racism or this plastic pollution mm -hmm. crisis we're facing, we don't really have time to be doing things the same way we have the past 20 years. Yeah. So it's just <laughs> it's like, true. that's where I've kind of come from. And um, I was really fortunate last year to um, 
we we've worked take three while i so i left take three yeah. earlier this year but 